You're listening to Partnernomics Podcast, where we discuss the art and science of developing successful strategic partnerships. To learn more about the suite of Partnernomics solutions, visit Partnernomics.com. All right, so welcome to this uh, inaugural podcast for Partnernomics Podcast. Man, it's something that... Uh, We've been talking about for a long, long time and finally caved in, just got sick of, uh, of, of saying we're still thinking about it. <laughs> and uh, So we decided to jump in here and do this. Uh, my name is Mark Brigman. I'm the founder and CEO of Partnernomics. And I have drug our marketing manager, Mr. Tyler Pittman, into this. And uh, we, we finally gave up. We finally begged for mercy and uh, decided to go ahead and knock out this podcast thing and give us another opportunity to interface and to work with uh, a lot of the different clients and uh, and just folks across the across the country. Mr. Tyler, what's going on, buddy? How you doing? Good, man. Doing good. Weekend is coming up. Absolutely. <laughs> no better time. <laughs> Love those Fridays, man. Love those Fridays. So, um, man, we've been talking about this podcast for months, you know, so we got you on yeah. board here, full-time marketing manager. Man, it's been a huge help. But... Um, Man, there's there's just so much content to share, and these uh, different folks that we're working with, uh, asking us to uh, to put out some some podcasts there, some ways that they can engage with us. So here we go, man. So let me ask you, what is the the best way people that are listening into this, if they want to ask questions or engage with us, what's uh, what do they need to do to to get some questions posed to us so we can chat about them? Yeah, if anyone has any questions for mark or myself to answer you just shoot your questions to marketing at partnernomics.com and subject the email with anything relating to the podcast all right buddy so uh what's what's going to kind of be the framework for the podcast or what's how, how are we going to tee this up and help some folks yeah uh for this first one we you know just talk a little bit about your background in partnerships as well as your idea of partnernomics and the content, what we have so far, and what we want people to get out of it at a in an end result. So, all right, buddy, well, fire away, man. Let's uh, let's get this thing kicked off. Yeah. So first, tell us a little bit about yourself. You know, your background in the workforce and just how you got started. Yeah, man. So I was really lucky uh, to be able to start my career in the late '90s, working at Sprint. Mm-hmm. And uh, at the time, I was just coming out of college, coming out of actually grad school. I went uh, kind of back to back um, with you know bachelor's, and master's in econ, and uh, so I started working at Sprint. And man, it was just a really interesting time. I, I love technology, or I learned to love technology. I didn't even really, I didn't know anything, right? Just hmm. jumping into that first job, and I, I quickly found this world of business development or biz dev. And, uh, you know, working with strategic partnerships and developing relationships with, man, some of the largest companies across the world, um, ABC, CBS, Disney, Fox, uh, man, just, you know, the Apples, the Googles, the Spotify's, I mean, all of these different companies having a chance to work with them and uh, build new products and bring their products to Sprint, to Sprint subscribers. Mm -hmm. And it's where I really got to see the power of partnership and it was amazing to see how fast we could get products up launched and literally making you know millions of dollars in in a matter of months um man it just it seemed it seemed like the 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 ultimate you know they talk about hacks all the time how can you how can you circumvent how can you speed things up and as an economist my brain works kind of in that economist way of looking for efficiencies right. and i just saw partnerships as as an amazing tool that companies could use and that's why i, I, I dug in you know i really I, I planned to be at sprint for maybe two years and man i was there for 13 turned into a little longer than that <laughs> it was crazy man because i was just having a blast you yeah. know getting to do exactly what i wanted to do mm-hmm. and uh it was a very entrepreneurial you know, set of groups that I had a chance to work in. I think I was probably, I don't know, seven or eight different teams that I uh, worked on over my career. But it was the best of all worlds. You know, I could kind of be that, that entrepreneur and, and very creative putting these new products and services together. But uh, it was always with 
mom and dad's money, so to speak. You know, <laughs> I never had to go liquidate my own accounts mm -hmm. to, to make these products happen. So, I man, it's just a huge education, a lot of really cool people, but it was, it was an amazing opportunity. Yeah. So moving on, before we get into partnernomics specific, you with your entrepreneurial background, um, I want to know in the difficult moments of you know building startups or partner building partnerships at Sprint, how do you stay focused, you know, when you're facing challenges on moving forward and making progress? Yes, yeah, so I think it all starts with it. To me, it doesn't matter if it's a startup or if you're at a company that's 10, 20, 30, 100 years old. Um, it really comes down to your why. You know, kind of like Simon Sinek uh, teaches us in, in his book, Start With Why. I mean, why do you exist? And, you know, we really try to encourage our clients to have a very clear, you know, vision for their company and then to truly live by uh, mission statements. I mean, what is, what is the mission of your organization? So to me, it doesn't matter. I mean, if you're in the middle of, of a recession, a freaking pandemic, or life is wonderful and uh, the, you know, the Dow Jones is hitting record highs, um, at the end of the day, what is your business focused on? What should it be focused on? Mm -hmm. And executing against that. And to me, that's kind of the North Star is always having being really clear about what what your vision is for your company and the mission you know for us at, at partnernomics and, and we'll definitely get into kind of what we do but um, you know our mission is is to work with our clients but specifically to to make it so that every client that we work with that they develop you know a core competency in strategic partnering and that's that's really what drives us and I think what should drive every company is, is truly what their mission is. Absolutely. Well, let's dive right into it. So, you know, tell us what made you want to start Partnernomics? Obviously, your background in Sprint, but Partnernomics specifically, and what compelled you to develop the business model that is Partnernomics today? So the last partnership that I had an opportunity to work on and manage when I was at Sprint um, it was about the last two and a half years, I think, it was with Ericsson. Mm -hmm. And it was a seven-year, $5 billion, uh, massive, massive relationship that entailed five or 6,000 employees. Um, it, was, it was the largest strategic partnership of its kind ever. And in, in being right in the middle of something so massive and so strategic, I had the opportunity to see the goods, the bads, and the uglies, right. you know, of partnerships, mm -hmm. everything from evaluating the due diligence process, all of the negotiating process, um, and then to operationalize the process. How right. are we going to put this partnership in place and then manage it to literally to achieve the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of goals that, that went into that? And you know, again, as an economist, the way my brain works, I was always asking myself, you know, what can we do to make this more efficient? And really, for probably the last decade, I've kind of been obsessed with this question of what are the success characteristics? What is the ultimate equation for successful partnerships? You know, what are those characteristics that... Um, if, if people follow, they will significantly improve their likelihood of success. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's been a lot of studies put out over the last decade that say that the failure rate of business-to-business -business partnerships or third-party strategic relationships, however you want to define them, um, but the, the, the failure rate of those partnerships is somewhere between 65 and 75% within two wow. years. Yeah. And that's, that is a number that is way, way, way too high. And so that is what my goal and kind of life's ambition is right now is I wanted to create an end-to-end -end process that companies could adopt that would allow them to significantly improve their relationships, so improve the success rate of their partnerships, but then ultimately the profitability mm -hmm. of those. And as I looked out across the landscape, 
there was no playbook. Yeah, nobody had one. <laughs> <laughs> there was no playbook. Yep. And so that's what Partneronomics is. It's, cool. you know, it's what we do to put a full uh, end-to-end toolbox together that companies can adopt to make more successful partnerships. Yeah. And with, you know, partnering becoming one of the increasing growth strategy as opposed to, you know, other options, it's becoming increasingly important to have that toolbox at companies dispense. So, yeah, we, uh, you know, the, to kind of boil it down, whenever we're working with companies, we say there's, there's three avenues for growth. Organic, you're going to do it alone. Mm-hmm. There's acquisition, you're going to buy your way into it, or through partnerships. And obviously, you know, partnerships is the world that we live in, but there was recently a study put out by um, KPMG, you know, the large accounting firm, and they polled hundreds of different CEOs across the country, and they uh, learned that 38% of CEOs say that uh, growing through strategic partnerships is their dominant growth strategy yeah. over the next three years. Man, 38% is a significant number. A large, large percent, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, so when you were building Partnernomics and all of the content, who or what were the most important resources for you to build upon and yeah man i am an absolute leadership junkie and so um kind of addicted to education and partnerships and a lot of different things but uh, i was in a, a doctoral program for a number of years in a leadership program and had the opportunity to be exposed to a lot of different thought leaders and you know there's a lot of people have said there's really no new ideas you know we're kind of just borrowing and sharing and trying to advance the ideas of other people Mm -hmm. um but just leaning on a a lot of those um you know those people that came before me great thought leaders and trying to put a framework together where you can really pull the the best of all worlds yeah you know the thing about partnerships is if you really distill it down, it's it's a, it's about people. It's about relationships, and that's that's what life is. Yep. Life is all about people and all about relationships. And so this framework that we've put together for partnerships, it touches everything. You know, it, it touches so many different components that if there's a great business book out there, no matter what it's on, it's on processes, it's on teamwork, it's on conflict resolution, management all of those different things there's a place to slide in those success practices into frameworks that we use yeah and i can attest as i've ran through some of the content and watched these thought leader interviews they are very valuable takes and very knowledgeable individuals that you were (laughs) talking to yeah it's been fun man that's something i definitely want to throw out there to uh to different folks is uh, if you like the content that, that we're going to be putting out for you, definitely follow us on all the different uh, social media platforms. But um, specifically, we have we do different Zoom interviews with thought leaders. And um, it's everybody from the Chris McChesney's Four Disciplines of Execution, um, Jerry Porras, who uh, has the awesome book, uh, Built to Last, that he put out over a decade ago. It's just kind of one of the Bibles. Man, there's just so many people. Uh, Nathan Furr, the Innovators Method. There's you know literally dozens and dozens of different thought leaders, CEOs that we've interviewed, and um, you know we we include those interviews as part of the curriculum of Partnernomics. But then we also you know slice up the the Q and As and throw those out there for people to check out. Uh, John Gordon, man, he's just on fire. He has. You know, another book that's out, and it's already the number one on Wall Street Journal. Uh, <laughs> kudos bad. to him, man. Yeah. It's good stuff that, that he puts out. Um, but, man, it's it's just helping to share, you know, all of these awesome, awesome recommendations and insights from, from people a lot smarter than me that, right. <laughs> uh, you know, are really successful at building businesses. Absolutely. So, Mark... Who are a few of the companies that Partnernomics has worked with to this point? Some of the ones that stick out to you or, you know, the ones that have seen really 
an increase in their partnering success. Yeah, man. So we've been really lucky, really blessed to, to work with a ton of companies. And um, it's everything from you know content that we've put out with the Partneronomics book that we published a few years ago. I think we're somewhere around 56, 57 different countries, yeah. actually, that people have purchased the book from, which absolutely blows my mind. Um, we've done a lot of uh, face-to-face workshops, and uh, then right now, though, the, the bulk of our work is done online uh, through uh, the coaching that we do on you know Zoom chats, and uh, then also anybody can go to our website to, to purchase courses. Um, so I don't even really know you know all of the different companies that we've worked with, but it's but it's been a ton and been a lot of them, everything from Folks at uh, CenturyLink, we've done a lot of good work with uh, uh, the folks at Atlantic Food. Um, man, there's just some really, really cool guys over there. We've done some uh, some work to pull people together in cohorts. Mm-hmm. So we get business leaders from a lot of different groups and step through the content with them. And man, it's just been really cool to see all of the different work that these companies are doing and it really doesn't matter. We've had people from, you know, marketing agencies to food distribution to financial services, all of these different companies. It's, it's, it's interesting to learn about their industries, but in the end, it still comes back to people mm-hmm. and it still comes back to relationships. Yep. And, um, you know, we can share a lot of good insights, but a lot of the times the strategies to, to improve our business, it's amazing how similar it is, even though... You know, a lot of us, we work in, in different in, in different industries. Mm-hmm. And that's the cool thing about the content is it's applicable to all of those different industries. It doesn't matter what your business model or where you specify what area. It is all useful for these people that, you know, these business leaders that want to implement the partnernomics model. And it can really help, you know, people out. Yeah, like I, like I said, there's three, you know, when we really boil it down, there's three ways to grow. There's organic, which is kind of the default approach that we all take to, to advance our businesses. There's acquisition, which uh, kind of depending on our company's resources may or may not be in the cards. Uh, but partnering that third route, it is, it's an absolute powerful tool that every business leader should leverage. Absolutely. It literally doesn't matter. If uh, you're in software development, if you're in hardware, you know, if you're healthcare, every single industry mm-hmm. has great examples of strategic partnerships that have added value to uh, to the people that participate in those. So, yeah, yeah, definitely. So, if you could give an individual, you know, just entering the world of partnerships, one piece of advice, what what would it be? So kind of look back at yourself when you first started out and you're not having much or any knowledge of partnerships, what they are, you know, what works, what doesn't work. What would you, you know, tell yourself at that young age? Yeah, great question. And my my answer is it it's not a zero-sum game. Mm-hmm. It's not me getting to win at your cost. But the beautiful thing about partnerships is there's a multiplier effect. Yeah. Whenever they're right, both parties end up with more. Right. Both than, sides are benefiting. Yeah. Yeah. And and both sides, you know, the where the sum of the parts is greater than the sum of the whole. Uh, that's that's what partnerships allow people to to gain from them. And I think so many times, and man, I saw this. <laughs> Literally, at uh, at senior executive levels, um, working at different companies, where they take a very short term, very transactional, very zero sum approach to partnerships, and it's kind of a me versus you instead of a me and you. Mm-hmm. And uh, man, that's that is definitely the first and the biggest piece of advice that uh, I would put out to somebody. Uh, starting their career in the strategic partnering world or or thinking about getting into biz dev or mm-hmm. uh, this you know, kind of strategic alliance realm that we play in and you know just to realize that um, the the power of the multiplier effect and and the mindset 
of, of partnering. It's, it's very different than kind of a traditional uh, transactional mindset. Right. It's not a one for all mentality. It's, you know, go together so you can see growth and benefit for both sides. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so regarding partnernomics, what is, you know, your ultimate vision for the company? Where do you see it going in the near future, far future? Yeah, the main thing that I, that I want to do, you know, with, with partnernomics, really it's, it's an umbrella of, of a lot of different things, but it's, it's a toolbox. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a, it's a set of, of tools, whether it's, it's courses, it's different pieces of content, it's tools, it's templates, all of these different components, and now we're you know putting a podcast into the mix. But I just want people to use these tools to become more effective business leaders, more effectively leverage the power of partnership, and ultimately just get better results for for their company. Um, there's there's lots of ways that we can go. There's lots of ways that um, that that we're considering um, pieces of you know potentially building software products that go beyond partnernomics.com, the, the community platform and mm-hmm. education platform that, we've, that we already have and has been in, in place for years. But uh, there's, there's also opportunities to put additional tools in place to help companies even find each other, kind of going beyond you know, steps into the future with, um, of, of what partnerships can do. But you know, we'll, we'll see uh, what makes sense, uh, places for us to go. But, but right now and really for the rest of 2020, I just want to continue to focus on putting out high-quality content and, and high-quality tools that will help people just be more successful. Yeah, just giving people knowledge, you know, stuff that can benefit them in the short and long-term run. Um, once again, if you have any questions and you want either of us to answer, feel free to launch your questions to marketing at partnernomics.com and subject that email, anything related to podcasts. So Mark, I think that's about wraps us up, you know, give you a good background on partnernomics, what it is about yourself. And yeah, it's very good information for people to hear. First one is in the books. Absolutely. Yeah, I look forward to it. I think this is going to be a really good thing. And, uh, you know, a lot of the clients that we've had have, have asked. It seems like there's a lot of different people that uh, are launching podcasts and, and sharing uh, their knowledge. And we're looking forward to, to providing that to folks as well. So it, it's going to be a good run. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, it's a great alternative to continue to give people knowledge, you know, that they can use. Awesome. Well, that wraps it up for this first, our inaugural episode of Partnernomics Podcast. Thank you for tuning in. We will see you next time. Partnernomics Podcast is brought to you by Partnernomics. Learn how to leverage the power of partnership. To listen to more episodes of Partnernomics Podcast, visit partnernomics.com.